Hey AP Lang students, this is a short tutorial to show you how you can use the databases to help you narrow down your research topic and find information on different points of view related to your controversial issue. So let's start from the library homepage and I'm going to click on online databases right here just so I can show you all the databases you have access to and you have access to all of these at home. Um, with the exception of EBSCO, which EBSCO, you will need to register with the Mountain View Public Library, which you can do right here. It takes about two minutes and you can get a library card and this will give you access to EBSCO. Um, so I'm not going to show you EBSCO today, but I will show you uh, some databases that focus on controversial issues and help you find posing viewpoints on those issues. Um, let's start with SIRS. Uh, you may get a little pop-up screen that says danger, but just keep going. It's a safe website. Uh, but this is a database that organizes viewpoints on a variety of controversial issues, and you can scroll through some of these here or try to find yours here. Um, probably the easiest thing to do is to just type in your topic. Um, so let's say I'm doing homeschooling, for example. And you'll know that uh, the database has a whole page devoted to it when you see this little box up here. Um, other than that, you know, you'll just scroll through and see related issues and articles about that. But if it has this, what that means is that the database has taken this issue and created a sort of essential question around this issue right here and given you viewpoints on either side one viewpoint here with three articles and one viewpoint here with three articles. And this could be really helpful in terms of just narrowing down your subject and trying to find that issue that you want to focus your speech and debate on. Um, you can find more sources by clicking here. Below they have some critical questions as well as a timeline that you can scroll through. So a lot of really good content on ProQuest. And let's say you click this and you really want to use this in your, um, in your bibliography. Um, the databases make that very easy too. You can save this to your Google Drive by clicking here. Um, and it'll just ask you to give them permission to drop it into your drive and that's okay. Uh, the citation is found right here. And again, you just wanna make sure you're using MLA and you can either export that or copy and paste it wherever you're saving those. Um, and you can look at, you know, related documents here if this ends up being very helpful and useful. Um, and if you don't have one, so let's say we say voting rights. There's no like page like that for voting rights. And that might be too broad a topic. As you can see, I'm getting a lot of different things here. Um, so, you know, maybe adding another search term will help narrow that down. I'm always looking to kind of narrowing down the results here. Um, but what that does is you can start to kind of look and scroll through these articles. Most of these are opinion articles um, or expressing some sort of opinion. That's why they're in this database. And if you want to limit this to the most recent uh, information, you can click last 30 days and that will take your results down, but at least you'll be getting more recent information um, about this topic. Okay, um, Opposing Viewpoints and Context is also a useful database to look for different opinions. And again, um, if you type in your topic here, you can see anything in bold is going to give you a lot of information. So I'm going to click on Voting Laws here. And the way that Opposing Viewpoints organizes its information is by giving you a sort of Wikipedia overview here and then giving you all the different types of content that they have available here. So you have academic journals here. Those are your peer-reviewed articles. You've got news. Um, but again, if you're looking to narrow down your topic, I might start with the viewpoints just to see the different points of view that are available on this subject and where that debate may exist. And so you can start to kind of look through these to try to find ideas and articles. Again, use the limiters here. So if you want things that are more recently, just like in the past year, for example, you can apply that limiter. Um, that takes us down to two, which is a little too small for what I want. So I might you know, eliminate that limiter right here. 
and um, maybe choose a different limiter looking at subjects or looking at document type. All these kinds of things can help you kind of find um, a more specific information that you're looking for. And again, if you are, if you find an article, you can save it to the, your drive here and you can get the citation up here. And again, just make sure it's MLA, select or export. Okay, you can also find information like that in these more general databases. Um, if we go to ProQuest here, um, and let's do, let's see, uh, universal basic income as my topic. You can see I have a lot of results here. And what I want to do is narrow this down. Now, first I'm going to show you, uh, and the limiters are here to do this. Um, and so obviously you want the full text right here. If you want your peer reviewed articles, your scholarly journals, you just click that. And again, that will narrow it down just to give you your peer reviewed journals right here. Um, but if you're still looking for um, opinion pieces and commentary, one way that you can do that on a general database like ProQuest is to look at um, newspapers and then go to, let's keep the last 12 months just so that we're getting most current information. And all your filters are will show up right here and you can see how they're affecting your results. Um, but what I might do here is under document type, I'm gonna click more here, click commentary, editorial, anything that sort of expresses opinion and apply that. And now I'm getting commentary and opinion from newspaper um, like the Los Altos, Los Altos, Los Angeles Times. And I'm gonna click on this here. Let's say this is what I want. Great, same thing. Um, cite it here, save it to my Google Drive here. And I'm good to go. So again, that's another way to use the limiters to help you kind of get to the opinions that you want and not spend a lot of time browsing through the, um, the long list of results that you have some, with some of these topics that can be pretty big. Okay, lastly, um, I'll show you EBSCO really quick just because it has a few extra steps that you need to follow. Um, and let me just walk you through those really quick. First thing I do is enter my library card number uh, right here and sign in. And what that'll bring me to is the collection of databases that EBSCO can search through. And so you want to select the databases that are relevant to your topic. Always select these top two because those are the most comprehensive. But as you scroll down, you'll see that there are other databases for specific topics like business, science, history. And you just want to make sure that you are searching a database that is relevant to your topic. So for the purposes of this search, I'm just going to use these top two. And I'm going to type in homeschooling. And you can see the drop-down menu gives me other ways of thinking about this topic, which can be helpful, especially if I'm thinking of different um, points of view, benefits and disadvantages might be a good thing to search. Um, but I'm gonna stick with just my general topic right now, just so I can show you how these limiters work. So I get uh, 1800 results, not bad. Um, and I'm gonna start to refine those results by using these um, limiters right here. And so first thing I want to do, um, here's the peer reviewed if I want scholarly journals. Um, I'm going to change the publication date to something more recent, uh, maybe the last 10 years, see what's been published. Um, I can go down here and look at just the magazine articles, the academic journals, the reviews, the news, and look through that information. Um, if I want to find opinions or editorials, they don't have a section here for that what you have to do is go to the advanced search page here and under the databases you'll see for example that they have uh, document types here so I can choose editorial and if I want to just look at the editorials on this topic I can do those document types and it'll give me editorials about that.
And again, if I have an article, I can save it to my Google Drive here. I can get the citation here. And again, and this time I have to sort of scroll down to get the MLA citation right here. Um, copy, paste, or export it um, if you're using any of that. Uh, pay attention to how these articles are um, subject terms related to these articles because that can help you uh, find other ways of searching in it. Um, and so right here, I see that maybe the, the reason I got so few results for homeschooling is because my search term is wrong. Um, and here, homeschooling is spelled this way. And in databases, spelling matters. And so I want to make sure I'm using the right term. So if I click on that link, um, I'm going to get maybe different results that are going to be more helpful uh, to me because that's the way that the database is cataloging these articles. Um, so just pay attention to that um, so that you know that you're using the right terms to find the right information. Okay, hopefully uh, this was helpful. Um, make sure you scroll through the other databases. Um, if you want statistics, statistics good. JSTOR will only give you academic uh, journal articles. Um, so if you're looking for that scholarly article, that's a good place to find it. Um, and these on the right are more subject specific databases, but that might be helpful depending on your subject. Okay, and if you ever have any questions, you can always uh, contact me via the library website. We have a panic button right down here uh, that if you click on that, it'll open up a sort of Google help form um, and we can re work remotely throughout this process. Okay, good luck. Thank you.